Hey, welcome back traders, it's John. It's time for a GMU Extra. These are brief videos on a trading topic. And today we're gonna to look at relative strength. So today we're gonna to look at the relative strength rating, which is a number. Then we'll look at the relative strength line. And then we'll start to look at the relative strength line in relation to a breakout or at 52 week new highs. And then a rate of change. We'll look at how relative strength can be used between sectors and stocks. So the RS rating, if you have MarketSmith, the number that you'll see in MarketSmith is a proprietary rating measuring the stock's price performance over a 12 month period versus all stocks in the IBD database. You can see the number here, RS rating of 95. So the way this is calculated, 40% of the weighting is assigned to the most recent quarter results with the remaining three quarters receiving a 20% weighting. Now the rankings go from one to 99, 99 being the highest. So an 85 uh, number means that the stock has outperformed 85% of all stocks in the IBD database. Now here's a caution note. The relative strength rating can really lag when a stock that has been in a sharp uptrend suddenly goes into a very sharp correction and it may even be breaking down. Um, the relative strength line might be coming down, but the actual number may still show say 95 is the rating when the stock is clearly breaking down. So the numerical rating can lag when a stock is topped. So you can see here Chipotle, Here's the relative strength line, and there's the rating at 95. So let's look at the relative strength line. Now the line is comparing a stock's price performance versus the S&P 500 index. And it's derived by dividing the stock's price by the S&P value. Now an upward sloping line means the stock price is outperforming the S&P 500. So this is the blue line in MarketSmith and if it's sloping up, this stock is outperforming the S&P. Here's Wingstop from 2023. Now, a few tips that I look for when we're looking at the relative strength line. I think it's important to pay attention to the slope of the line. So you want that direction of the line generally going, um, if you used a clock as an example, you want the line going, going up towards 12 o'clock or at least one o'clock or two o'clock in its slope. That's showing the most strength. An RS line that's going fairly sideways towards three o'clock is not as strong. The second thing it's important that I look for in the relative strength line is looking at the kinks in the line. You can see that this particular one for wing stuff, you've got these big kinks in the line, which is not as strong as a smooth, persistent relative strength line. So I look for that as well. So you'll notice in this example of Melly, we can see that the relative strength line is actually angled in a positive slope, but it's very, very choppy. Look at all these kinks in the line, it goes up, down, up, down. And usually that's very reflective of choppy price action. And you can see that Melly has had some sloppy, wide and loose action. Even though it's still ground its way higher, it's fairly sloppy and the relative strength line is reflecting um, sloppy strength. Now, if you look at Excellus, in this example, this is taken from TradingView, you can see that the relative strength line is much more smooth and persistent. You see how here there's very few kinks in the line. It's fairly persistent with only small little pullbacks in the line. That's preferred. This means it's more persistent relative strength. Now, in this case, we also have the relative strength line breaking out into new high ground before the price breaks out. So you can see here, if we draw a little line here, you can see that the new high and the relative strength line corresponds to the stock still being in a consolidation. It happened again. The relative strength line came up showing strength of the stock even before it broke out, which it didn't break out until about four to five days later. That's very strong action for the relative strength line saying this stock is outperforming the S&P 500. Now on a breakout, we wanna see the relative strength line 
um, confirm the new high in price. We want to see possibly 52-week new highs in the relative strength line to also confirm the strength. Now, both of these are not guarantees something is going to work. All trades have risk, but you're trying to simply increase your odds by looking at the strength, relative strength line for clues that maybe you have your hands on a strong stock. So this is Green Brick Partners. So looking at this, there's a lot of things in this chart to look at. The first thing we'll look at is the relative strength line is showing strength before the breakout, which is a positive. So you can see here, if you look at this little relative strength line, it breaks out right in this area and we draw an arrow, we're still within a base. So the relative strength line is outperforming. Now in this case, it never really broke out due to the bear market and we came back in. But you'll notice that the relative strength line again broke out at this point here. And when we correspond that to the chart, the stock is still in a base. But the relative strength line is starting to outperform, giving you a clue that this stock may be ready to break out soon. So that's a positive. The second thing, when we actually did break out at this point here, it corresponded in this orange zone, which the relative strength line was already in new 52-week high new ground, confirming the price breakout with the price action. Very, very positive. And the last piece of information that's important is we've talked about it earlier. Look at the relative strength line in the prior base, fairly um, erratic and a lot of kinks in the line. But notice that the successful breakout, the relative strength line has very few kinks. It's much smoother showing the strength and persistent advance. In this case, it's probably pointing to about two o'clock. Positive situation. So now let's change to the rate of change. And we use this to compare the relative strength between different securities. So what you do is you simply identify a time frame that you want to compare, and then you can compare groups, you can compare sectors, or you can compare individual stocks. And our goal is to really identify the strength in the market. So this is a relative strength with some semiconductor stocks. And I call this a rock study for rate of change study. Now, in this case, I'm looking at multiple semiconductor stocks. And at the time frame that I've chosen in this example, I want to look at from the October lows in the market, which semiconductor stocks are performing the best relative strength wise. So the low of October 13th is used as our start point. And then you can see this is the relative strength of all of these particular semiconductors. It shows you very clearly that NVIDIA and Excellus are some of the strongest. And you can see the percentage gains since the October lows. Now, if we zoomed in and we wanna take this rate of change study a little further, I've changed this to start date on April 21st of 2023. So when we use that as the starting point and we look at the same list of stocks, you can see that it becomes even more clear that the recent price action of these stocks clearly shows us that AMD and Rambus, Excellus and NVIDIA are really leading the group as well as it shows us that uh, ALGM and LSCC are really going sideways and they're lagging the group. So this was done from the May, the May lows to identify stronger leadership within the group. Another way we can use this with groups is I've taken four different groups from the IBD database. And these are the symbols, G709 and so forth. And I even compared them with the XLK ETF. So you can see I've chosen a one year period from May of 2022 to May of 2023. And you can see that um, the apparel shoe is uh, leading over that one year period followed by housing. And then we have some of the leisure stocks. So this gives you an idea of which groups are acting well. And then you go inside those groups and you wanna look at the relative strength. In this case, some of these names have been strong in the apparel shoes and so forth. But again, it's a way to uh, zoom in on the strongest stocks within a group by doing this rate of change. This is a trading view chart. Again, looking at relative strength by comparing the NASDAQ composite and I've overlaid the um, ETFs for the communication sector, the consumer discretionary sector, and the technology sector.
So again, we're looking at the lows in the market in October. And we said, well, what is the technology sector doing? It looks like the technology sector bottomed out coincident with the NASDAQ uh, bottoming out. And you'll notice that even though the NASDAQ has not broken a recent high here, you can see the XLK is already starting to break out, showing that relative to the composite index, XLK is outperforming. And you can do that with different ETFs as well as stocks. So I hope you enjoyed this relative strength analysis. We looked at the rating, we looked at the line, we looked at the line in the context of a breakout and different ways to use rate of change as a way to measure relative strength. We've scratched the surface. There's more to go on relative strength, but hopefully this gives you the basics to show how you can use this tool in your trading. Thanks. We'll see you on the next GMU Extra update.